Hi viewers, welcome to GRS Learn Life Sciences. In this video, we are going to learn the digestive system of pigeon. So, this pigeon belongs to subphylum vertebrata and class uh, Aves. In the digestive system of birds, we see so many unique features as they have the aerial mode of life. So, we can see so many modifications in the digestive system of bird uh, as an adaptation for uh, its uh, avian mode of life. This digestive system comprises of two parts, they are called alimentary canal and digestive gland. This alimentary canal is further comprises of so many anatomical structures. Uh, they are mouth, buccal cavity, pharynx, esophagus and crop, stomach, small intestine, large intestine or rectum, then anus and cloaca. The stomach has two parts, they are called uh, the proventriculus and uh, the gizzard. So, in uh, other vertebrates, we see stomach has divided into cardiac stomach and pyloric stomach. But uh, in birds, we see the proventriculus and gizzard in the stomach. Then coming to small intestine, this small intestine has further two parts, they are called duodenum and ileum. Let us discuss this anatomical structure one by one. This mouth is a, a wide uh, slit or a wide aperture and this mouth is bounded by two structures they are called upper beak and the lower beak. So the mouth is uh, bounded by this upper beak uh, and the lower beak. The, the interesting point of uh, bird's mouth is that uh, the mouth uh, doesn't have the teeth so teeth are absent in the mouth of the birds and then this mouth opens into the buccal cavity. In the buccal cavity on its floor tongue is present so in the buccal cavity on its floor tongue is present this, this tongue is uh, in a triangular structure so at the tip of uh, this tongue is uh, pointed so this tongue is present uh, on the floor of this uh, buccal cavity then on the roof of the buccal cavity uh, a pair of internal nostrils are present we know that in respiration we have studied that external nostrils opens into the nasal sacs and nasal sacs opens uh, by these internal nostrils into this uh, buccopharyngeal cavity so so on the roof of this uh, buccal cavity this uh, internal nostrils are present then this buccal cavity opens into the next part that is called the pharynx in pharynx on its roof the eustachian tube opens so we know that this eustachian tube connects the middle ear into the buccal cavity so this eustachian tube is present on the roof of the pharynx wall coming to the floor of this pharynx wall glottis is present so this glottis is present behind this tongue so behind this tongue the glottis is present we have studied in the respiratory system this glottis uh, helps to open this pharynx into the next part of the trachea that is called larynx so this glottis is in a slit like aperture so it helps opening of this uh, pharynx into the next part of the uh, respiratory system that is called uh, the larynx then posteriorly this wide pharynx uh, becomes narrower and uh, to form the next uh, digestive part uh, that is called the esophagus so at the posterior part of uh, this uh, pharynx there is an aperture and that aperture is called the gullet so this gullet helps opening of this uh, buccal cavity into the esophagus region next let us discuss the next anatomical part that is called esophagus and crop so the pharynx posteriorly continues as a esophagus we can see here uh, this is the esophagus this esophagus runs uh, through head and uh, neck into the next part of the uh, digestive system that is called the stomach this esophagus runs through head and neck and reaches to the stomach part so this uh, esophagus forms the crop structure so so this esophagus at this uh, base of the neck it forms a, a bilobed crop structure so it forms a bilobed crop structure this uh, esophagus so before it uh, joins with this uh, stomach it forms a bilobed structure at the base of the neck so this bilobed structure is called uh, the crop this crop is useful for storing of the food in the birds when bird takes uh, the food grains uh, so quickly so those food grains can be stored in this uh, crop part of the esophagus when the food grains are stored in this crop part uh, the dry food grains uh, can become the smooth so that uh, the digestion of these uh, food grains becomes uh, very easier in the next part of the digestive system the pigeons are very well known for uh, production of the pigeon milk and that pigeon milk uh, is uh, produced by the epithelial cells of uh, this crop part only 
and the secretion of uh, this pigeon milk is regulated by a hormone that is called prolactin so this prolactin regulates the secretion of this pigeon milk from the crop of this uh, esophagus this fusion milk is uh, synthesized by both the male and female birds so that is also very important so it is regulated by the prolactin and uh, this fusion milk is uh, released by both the male and females uh, so after this bilobed crop structure the esophagus again continues as a, a short narrow tube and joins with the stomach the stomach in the fusion is uh, differentiated into two parts they are uh, proventriculus and gizzard see the structure of uh, the stomach now the stomach is uh, divided into two parts as a uh, proventriculus and uh, the gizzard so, so it appears like just a small dilation of uh, this uh, uh, esophagus so it appears like just a small dilation of the esophagus the thick wall contains the mucus glands those mucus glands secretes mucus in the proventriculus also the gland spleen is attached to the right part of this proventriculus uh, in the body of uh, the bird the next part of the stomach is called the gizzard so this is the gizzard this is a very large part the walls of this gizzard are also very thick and muscular coming to the lumen of this gizzard so this is the body wall of the uh, gizzard so it is a muscular very thick wall so coming to the lumen uh, this lumen part uh, so this lumen is internally covered by the epithelial cells these epithelial cells are also horny epithelial cells, uh, thick epithelial cells and uh, the rough epithelial cells. So thick, rough and horny epithelial cells uh, are present on the walls of the lumen. So inside of this lumen we observe the stones. So these stones are helpful for this bird to, to grind or to make the food particles uh, into small pieces. Though we don't uh, call this as cardiac stomach and uh, pyloric stomach, uh, still uh, uh, the sphincters are called uh, cardiac sphincters and uh, pyloric sphincters. So this proventriculus opens into this gizzard by the cardiac opening or the card cardiac sphincter. And uh, this uh, gizzard opens into the next part of the intestine uh, that is called the duodenum by the pyloric sphincter. So the next part of the digestive system is called the intestine, small intestine. So here we can see this red color and this green color uh, tube is called the small intestine. This is very long. Uh, a coiled tube this long coiled narrow tube has uh, two structures or uh, two parts uh, they are called uh, the duodenum and uh, ileum so this red part is called the duodenic part and uh, this uh, green part is called the ileum part so this duodenum uh, forms uh, this u-shaped structure inside of this u-shaped structure uh, the pancreas uh, is present so coming to the internal structure of this duodenum, this uh, duodenum has uh, inside uh, the villi structures uh, that means the mucus foldings are present in this one. Also it has the crypts of Leberkins and also the goblet cells. All these are present in the duodenum part of the intestine. And this uh, duodenum receives uh, the ducts from the hepatic gland and also from the pancreatic gland. So from the hepatic gland we can see two uh, ducts uh, uh, joins with this uh, duodenum and from this pancreas one duct uh, joins with the duodenum so the next part of the uh, small intestine is called ileum uh, this is the largest part of the small intestine so it is so it's completely coiled or convoluted tube uh, and inside of this tube uh, villi are present uh, and uh, because of this villi uh, this small intestine part that is the uh, ileum can absorb uh, more uh, uh, nutrients from the food then the next part of the digestive system is called the rectum or the large intestine so the so the ileum joins with the next part of the digestive system that is called the large intestine or the rectum so at the junction of this uh, ileum and uh, this rectum uh, rectal cecum are present and this uh, rectal cecum may be helpful for absorbing the water from this uh, food this rectum is uh, differentiated into two parts uh, the anterior part is called uh, the rectum and the posterior part is called the cloaca so this is about the digestive system so the digestive system comprises of uh, these anatomical parts such as mouth buccal cavity pharynx esophagus and crop then stomach this stomach has two parts they are called proventriculus and gizzard then small intestine it has duodenum and ileum then anus anus open into cloaca cloaca has uh, three parts they are called coprodium urodium and uh, proctodium then coming to this crop this crop uh, produces uh, the crop milk in the pigeons the next part of the digestive system is called large intestine or rectum. 
the ileum of the intestine opens into the this large intestine and the junction where this ileum opens into this large intestine has a rectal cecca and this rectal cecca helps for uh, absorption of water from the fecal matter also this rectal cecca releases uh, some digestive juices uh, the digestive juices of this rectal cecca is helpful for digesting the fibers of the fecal matter the large intestine is divided to two parts the, the anterior part is called rectum and the posterior part is called cloaca the rectum opens into the cloaca by an aperture that is called anus so the rectum opens into this cloaca by this uh, anal pore so anal pore connects the rectum with the cloaca now let us now see in detail structure of this cloaca this cloaca is divided into three chambers the anterior chamber is called coprodium the second chamber is called erodium and the third chamber is called proctodium the rectum opens into the coprodium that means uh, by anal pore it opens inside of this uh, coprodium with this anal pore uh, this uh, rectum opens into this coprodium so the fecal matter is released into the coprodium by this uh, anus the next part is called the erodium and uh, this pot receives the ureters and also the gonoduct so the gametes and the uric acid is released into the erodium part of the cloaca then the last part of the cloaca is called the proctodium and uh, so this is the proctodium so on the dorsal wall of this proctodium this bursa fabrici is present it is a lymphoid organ which secretes the lymphocytes in the buds but this bursa fabrici is seen only in the young birds not in the matured birds once the once the birds get matured sexually this bursa fabrici gets degenerated this bursa fabrici in this uh, cloaca part of uh, this uh, proctodium keeps this organism away from the infections in the cloaca region then this cloaca opens outside by this cloacal aperture so this proctodium opens outside by this cloacal aperture so this is about the cloaca next let us see the digestive glands of uh, this digestive system many types of glands can be seen in the digestive system of a bird like uh, buccal glands salivary glands uh, gastric glands uh, liver pancreas tubular glands and cecal glands in birds the digestion is very rapid because uh, high metabolism in the birds so in order to produce more amount of energy for uh, their flight uh, they have a high metabolic rates in the body for supplying substrate for this high metabolism the digestion is very rapid very fast in the birds so with the help of all these uh, glands and their secretions uh, the, the body performs the digestion very rapidly another interesting point in the digestive system of the birds is that uh, they can convert uh, almost one by third of the food into the energy but in humans uh, and other vertebrates we don't see this much of efficiency of the conversion of food into energy in humans only 1 by 10th portion of food is converted into the energy due to the high conversion of this food in due to this high conversion efficiency we see only formation of little fecus in the birds now let us discuss about these glands uh, so the first uh, type of glands are called buccal glands they are present in the buccal cavity so they are not similar to the salivary glands so they just uh, secretes the mucus as the buccal cavity has the mucus and the mucus is secreted by these buccal glands we know that the birds they eat uh, seeds pulses sometimes even they uh, eat some small organisms uh, so this kind of food habits can be seen in the birds the seeds and pulses are very hard enough to make it into pieces in the buccal cavity the seeds and pulses are very hard enough to make it into pieces as uh, the mouth doesn't have the teeth in the birds uh, these uh, seeds and pulses they cannot be masticated in the buccal cavity so due to this mucal secretions in the buccal cavity the seeds and pulses uh, they get moistured and become soft then the next glands are called the salivary glands uh, so these salivary glands are uh, present in the pharynx region this saliva makes this uh, seeds and pulses further soft even it is said that uh, this saliva contains enzymes also but it is not completely proved then the next glands are called the gastric glands 
we know that these gastric glands are present in the stomach region so the anterior part of the stomach is called proventriculus and the posterior part is called the gizzard so we, here you can see stick cells they are uh, they are large enough to visible to our naked eye and the secretions of uh, these uh, gastric glands uh, have some enzymes so some peptic enzymes are present in the secretions of these gastric glands also this gizzard has uh, some digestive glands they are called tubular glands and these these tubular glands also secretes uh, the digestive juices and these digestive juices uh, may also contain some kind of uh, digestive enzymes so this is about the gastric glands uh, and the tubular glands ne next to the liver liver here we can see the liver uh, this liver is actually the very large gland in the body also this is a bilobed gland so the right lobe and the left lobe two are present the right lobe is very larger here but the left lobe is very small and this right lobe and left lobe uh, they form the hepatic ducts and uh, gall bladder is absent in this organism so it is also one of the modifications for its uh, avian mode of life so this right lobe and left lobe they form the hepatic ducts and these hepatic ducts they open into the uh, the duodenum of the intestine so the right lobe and left lobe they open into the duodenum independently the next digestive gland is called the pancreas so this is the pancreas here we can see this is present in this u shaped uh, uh, the duodenum this forms uh, three ducts and uh, all these three ducts uh, they join with the duodenum so the hepatic ducts are also this pancreatic ducts they open into the duodenum next glands are called the intestinal glands so I have forget to write here so the intestinal glands are present in the intestine so they are present in the duodenum and also in the ileum of the intestine and so the juices of this hepatic gland and the pancreas and the intestinal gland they contain some digestive enzymes and uh, these digestive enzymes uh, they digest uh, the incompletely digested food which has come from the stomach region then the other glands are called the cecal glands and they are present uh, between this intestine and the rectum so they are present uh, at the junction of this uh, ileum and this uh, rectum and uh, these these cecal glands also secrete some digestive uh, juices and these digestive juices uh, helpful for uh, digesting the fiber of the fecus so this is about the digestive glands so this uh, hepatic gland secretes uh, some bile salts and uh, that bile salts are helpful for uh, emulsification and pancreas uh, and the intestinal glands uh, they produce some digestive enzymes like maltase amylase lipase uh, and all so those digestive enzymes uh, they completely digest the indigested food which has come from the the stomach and these gastric glands they are present in the proventriculus and uh, these proventriculus spot also performs the digestion then the salivary glands these salivary glands are present in the pharynx region and uh, buccal glands and the salivary glands they make the food is more soft uh, as uh, the teeth are absent in these uh, birds then the then the crop pot and this crop pot also makes uh, this food is more soft uh, this crop doesn't secrete see any enzymes so digestion is uh, doesn't takes place in the crop in the crop part of the bird so the digestion in the birds first starts in the proventriculus of uh, the stomach so this proventriculus releases some um, peptidases and those peptidases uh, digestion in the proventriculus then then the food reaches into the gizzard part of the digestive system in, in this gizzard uh, the mechanical digestion takes place as this gizzard has some stones then from this gizzard uh, the incompleted uh, chyme is released into the the intestine so then in the intestine uh, the complete digestion takes place in this intestine the hepatic juices and the pancreatic juices and intestinal juices they digest this incompleted food and uh, the intestinal walls uh, have the cecca uh, that means the they have the internal foldings so the ileum has uh, this internal foldings so this ileum absorbs the nutrients from this uh, digested food from this intestine the undigested fecal matter reaches to the rectum so in this rectum again we see the absorption of water and also some little digestion uh, by the the rectal glands or the cecal glands so then from the rectum 
the fecus is released into the coprodium so the anterior chamber of the cloaca is called the coprodium so the, so this rectum opens into the cloaca by the anus so the undigested the fecal matter is released into the anterior part of the cloaca that is called the proctodium then from proctodium it uh, reaches to the urodium in urodium in urodium this uh, fecus gets mixed with the urinary material from there it reaches to the proctodium from from proctodium it is released outside of the body by the cloacal aperture so this is about the digestive glands and the physiology of digestion and also the alimentary canal of the bird thank you for watching this video please subscribe for my channel